uh, here joining us via all means. Uh, today I want to focus my presentation on our present national response to the eruption of La Soufre volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis uh, would have, through a statement by the Honorable Prime Minister, would have advised the general public of the two-phase approach to the national response in assistance to the people and government of St. Vincent and the Grenadine. In, the, in phase one, uh, we looked at a financial, as financial assistance in the sum of EC $1 million. And two, we looked at immediately releasing to CEDEMA US $20,000 towards the Special Emergency Assistance Fund so that they can support logistical operations on the ground. In addition to that, and in phase one, we also looked at providing humanitarian assistance, human resources, sorry, providing human resource uh, through our defense force and police force in support of the regional security system by having technical, sorry, and having officers support technical, uh, give technical support and conduct peacekeeping efforts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My understanding is that our forces are on standby and there's a possibility that a deployment can come as soon as Friday of this week. We also, in phase one, committed ourselves to helping with a release supplies drive uh, to that of a needs list provided by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And the list was as follows, drinking water, a respirator face mask with filters, non-perishable dry food items, bleach, disinfectant, liquid soap, and personal hygiene kits. I am pleased to, know, to inform the general public that a 40-foot container and a 20-foot container with these items were shipped yesterday to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And my information is that St. Vincent and the Grenadines would have received these today, Wednesday. So thank you to, to Tropical Shipping for their support in this regard. Phase two of our national response to the impact of La Soufre eruption uh, would be the acceptance of displaced persons in the amount not exceeding 300 persons. And this includes families of twos and threes. And to manage this operation, uh, the federal cabinet has approved the establishment of a St. Kitts and Nevis Displaced Persons Planning Committee. And this committee will guide the criteria of screening, applying the COVID-19 protocols, providing welfare and basic needs to ensure safety and security of these persons and including our residents alike. Uh, the, the committee of displaced persons will come from the, the, the following, well, will come from these agencies and ministries. Ministry of Social Services, who will be the lead, and this will be led by the permanent secretary of this ministry. Ministry of National Security, and that means, when we say national security, we mean the secretariat. Immigration Department, the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, NEMA, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, Mental Health and Psychosocial Committee, Labor Department, Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Christian Council, Evangelical Association, St. Kitts and Nevis Red Cross Society, Nevis Disaster Management Department, and a representative for Customs and Excess Department. So each, each ministry and department an institution will provide one representative to make up this committee. Uh, this committee will guide the process again for the screening tool that will be applied uh, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in collaboration with NEMO in St. Vincent and then it will guide the process of arrival into St. Kitts and Nevis and what happens then thereafter. The food drive again I want to thank uh, every 
contributor, we would have had we would have had 264 contributors, and we would have amounted uh, goods to the sum of 150 thousand EC dollars and again we really want to thank everyone from our corporate partners to the ordinary citizens who contributed in this regard. I am encouraging persons to make, the, uh, to make monetary contributions. You can do so by going, by going to the Treasury and giving your donation along, along with uh, having the option to uh, deposit at the St. Kitts Nevis Anguilla National Bank to the account number 101-269-63 in the name of the Accountant General. Please let's continue to show solidarity with the people and government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We will continue with the, this time a national food drive again. We will continue with the national food drive, that's NEMO, and we have a 40 foot container here at the uh, comp NEMA compound that we need to uh, stock so that we can ship out next week, Tuesday again, to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am again appealing to the general public, the business community, NGOs, churches, and everyone to bring your non-perishable items, dry food goods, and donate them for our suffering friends uh, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The cutoff time for this national food drive will be Monday the 19th by 12 noon. I'm asking everyone to support this very important venture. Now, some questions some question have been coming to us regarding vol our volcanoes and volcanoes throughout the Caribbean region. And in consultation with the UE Seismic Research Center in St. Augustine, Trinidad, they have indicated that the, tri the eruption in St. Vincent will not be linked to any other volcano. What do I mean by that? Because this volcano has erupted, it doesn't mean it's going to have a chain effect as the volcanoes are not linked. So it says basically in the communique, no volcanoes in the, no, volcanoes in the Caribbean are not connected. Volcanoes and individual islands are formed by the same process, subduction at the plate boundary, but they do not share the same magma chamber, nor are they long connecting magma conduit. A volcanic eruption on one island, therefore, cannot trigger an eruption on another island. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we have our volcano at the Mount Lyamigo, which is approximately 3,792 feet, and Nevis Peak, which is 3,232 feet. We continue to monitor these volcanoes with our seismic monitoring systems that are in place, and they are also monitored at the UV Seismic Research Center in Trinidad. And the question again, what will St. Kitts do? We have a mass evacuation plan that is in draft form, and that will be applied in the event that we are faced with this threat. And we also have a volcano hazard map that indicates the various impact zones using a color coding system. And this will basically give us the idea how do we prioritize evacuation if Sinkis has to become under any threat. I want to advise the general public that we are, uh, we are a short way from the start of the hurricane season. And to date, the Colorado State uh, University has given the first hurricane forecast. Now, this is how it goes. Uh, they give the first forecast, and then they continue to monitor, and they will, this forecast can change. It can increase or decrease. Uh, at present, they have indicated that we have a above normal season for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. There are 17 named storms, eight hurricane, four major hurricane, meaning category three or higher. Now, this complexes everything for us in the Caribbean region. So we have been focusing on reopening the borders. We have been focusing on getting you inoculated. Now, we have to also focus on the hurricane seasons on top of the inoculation. So if we really want to move uh, quickly, then let's move quickly to inoculate, vaccinate, 
let's prepare for the hurricane season because this poses another challenges, another challenge for us. Uh, last year, the shelters, the capacity of the shelters had to be reduced significantly. There's a system that we use called the body system, and that is what we first encourage if we become under the threat of any major hurricanes, meaning that be your brother's keeper. So a, a neighbor is encouraged to accept a neighbor into his house. I am saying to you, I don't know if your neighbor would want to accept you if you are not providing some level of safety to them. Also, I want to advise the general public on something uh, that is being asked as well. The air quality. Uh, the Antigua Met Office would have provided us with an air quality forecast. And they have advised that the air quality uh, due to the Sahara dust uh, has fallen to moderate level uh, due to the Sahara dust and also the potential of particles, ash particles reaching the Northeast region. Every year we are challenged with the Sahara dust that comes off the west coast of Africa, travels the Atlantic and enters into the Caribbean islands. And this is compiled with the potential of uh, light particles of ash, uh, depending on the air currents and the higher levels of the atmosphere, bringing it up to the northeast regions in the Caribbean, the two of them mixing and creating a, 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 a un uncomfortable environment for persons who may suffer from respiratory uh, illnesses. So I'm advising the general public to exercise caution. Uh, please wear your mask where necessary to protect yourselves. I too want to join with, the, uh, with Dr. Wilkinson in expressing my condolences to uh, the fallen nurse Josephine Atzell, and I, have, I appeal to the general public for us to show uh, a level of sensitivity to the passing of this nurse who would have served our country well. She would have left her country to come here and serve and I think she deserves that dignity. So to the family, friends of uh, nurse Josephine Adsell, who I came to meet, who I met at JNF while seeking assistance there, and she was rather, rather, uh, and she was very nice in, in delivering her services. So again, I appeal to the general public for us to show some compassion to her family during this a difficult moment for them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr.